Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 74 of the Brent Pella Show. 74. This week's episode is with a very special guest, Ryan Turner. He is a director based out of Los Angeles. He's also an editor and a producer and a writer and everything else that everybody in LA is. But specifically, this dude is a very, very talented director. I know Ryan from UC Santa Barbara. We met in college. Um, we've crossed paths a, a bunch of times over the past couple of years, but it's actually been a few years since I saw him. So we had a great time catching up on all things LA. It's a very LA conversation. It's also a very creative conversation. So if you guys are in any of the creative fields or you want to um, dip your toes into a anything about filmmaking, production, uh, writing, creativity, anything like that, this is a very cool conversation to listen to. Um, and it starts off with a funny story from me about something that literally happened moments before Ryan came through for the podcast. So uh, we dive into that pretty quick. Um, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers, my favorite supplement. You've heard me talk about it before. Definitely going to talk about it again because I take it every day. Uh, it's made with all seven types of supplemental magnesium that can help you recover faster and uh, aligns your body with its optimal health, baby. Magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash Brent Pella for 10% off. And Bioptimizers will send you a free copy of the Biological Optimization Blueprint, a book that's packed with nutritional information and facts based on research and science, scientific studies um, to help you live a happier, healthier life, which I want for you and you want for you because we should all be operating at our highest form so that when the aliens show up, they can be, they'll be like, oh damn, these people are actually pretty chill. Let's stay and party, right? Um, they're pretty healthy. Let's stay and have sex with them. That's what we all want to do with the aliens. All right, I'm getting off track. Guys, this episode of the podcast with Ryan Turner was an absolute blast. Um, and enjoy it. Here it is. What's up, bro? <laughs> Yo, do you want headphones? Uh, yeah, sure. You, you, don't, you don't have to use them, but you can. No, I won't. I'm... I'm have you um, done? Have you been on people's podcast? Before? No, this is a. You're is, breaking my. Is this your first pod? You say breaking. You don't break a chair. You pop a chair. You pop a chair. You pop a podcast chair. We're gonna pop your podcast yeah. chair today, dude. Breaking sounds much more. Uh, Breaking's aggressive. Yeah. You want to pop it? Pop it like a pinata. You don't pop pinatas. Balloons. I'm yeah. Really... Pinatas you smash. <laughs> you're doing a great job. You would break pinatas. Ryan Turner, yeah. everybody. Hey, how's it going? Um, man, when's the last time we saw each other? Man, uh, let's see. Was it a party? Probably. Is it at your, when you lived in Los Feliz? Yeah, yeah. That was like six years ago. <laughs> that was a long, that was a long time, time ago. ago. That was a long time ago. We didn't see each other. We didn't run into each other. No. I don't think we ever did. Unless you went to one of those um, UCSB uh, alumni things. Um, I did, but I don't think I was. We didn't over the Arclight ones? The, yeah, yeah. At the, at the Arclight. RIP, yeah. I guess. Unless Tarantino's buying it. I don't know. Or um, UC. Dude, my voice, do you hear my voice right now? Yeah. It's gone. So we were just shooting this video okay. uh, where me and my buddy Aristotle, he goes by at Blake Weber on Instagram. Okay. Um, we we're shooting this video uh, b dressed up as big birds, like like crows. Not big bird. but Not um, big bird, but, but like big uh, birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're the, the bird, the, uh, the loud birds outside your window at 5 a.m. Right, nice. And so we're on my balcony just screaming like, hey, hey. What's good? And like screaming at each other, just, so just being right super loud right here. Okay. Loud as fuck. And the police got called and they walk up in the alley and they look up and I'm dressed in, as a bird. I have, I have the crow nose on me. I'm a big black and everything. No way. And, um, and they look up and they're like, what's going on? <laughs> and I was like, oh, we're shooting a comedy video. It's, we're, we're dressed as like the birds that wake you up in the morning, right? And the cop was like, oh, okay, because we got a call about a, a woman screaming. They're like, there's a woman in trouble. Oh. And we were like, holy shit. Because we were both screaming like, ah! like, like that, right? And so they were like, we got to come up. And I said, all right. I mean, it's three okay. is right here. I gave them the address and everything. Yeah, so yeah. they came around and, and they came up and I answered my door. There's five of them. There's five, That's five cops. Granted, probably a good thing that they show up with five cops for a woman screaming. Yeah, yeah. You so don't good know on the LAPD for that. How many attackers. Right. You don't know how many birds are <laughs> yeah. straight up assaulting yeah, a woman. Yeah, I mean, hey, that, yeah. I've, birds with Hitchcock, you know, it's a real... Exactly. It's a real thing. And so they come to the door, and I'm still in full bird mode. I got the beak on. Yeah, uh, we, we just, while they were walking up, we got we got the rest of our shots on the balcony. Were we, you we messing, stole like, them. in the... You're still... The <laughs> <laughs> no, but that would have been hilarious if I just, if I Sacha Baron Cohen'd it. Yeah, you're just... I, I answered I'm, the door I'm like, the hey! <laughs> What's up? 
And um, I answer the door. There's five of them. They immediately start laughing. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we got to come in and check it out. And I was like, well, wait, hang on. Because don't you have to have a warrant to come in? Not that I have any like contraband or anything, but just a rights thing, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I said, I'd I'd rather not if that's okay. Like you see, I'm a bird. And they said, oh, no, actually we have to. There's an, it's, it's the, I, I think they said the unknown trouble law. Or the, mm. uh, something like that. It was yeah. like the. Um, That's what they. Is that the. Ver- the the verbiage like was like. There was a phrase. It was like. The, I'm sorry. It's it's unknown trouble. So we have to come in. Huh. And he like made a, a mo- Yeah. And he just started walking in. And I was like. I guess that's a thing. I had no idea. So yeah. they come inside. Of course, they look around. There's nothing in here. It's me and my. But he's in a bird costume too. Dude, another bird. Yeah. And our DP is filming the whole thing on a phone. DP's not a bird. DP's not a bird. DP's a human. And I came over, I was like, hey, come watch the footage. And I brought him in here and I showed him the footage and they just started laughing and, um, and then they left uh, and it was great. And I went back out to the living room and I saw that I had left my prop gun on the couch because I have a prop Ooh. gun that looks like a legitimate looks, firearm. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, um, it's an airsoft gun. Chip. No, 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 no. It's all black. It looks like a straight up movie gun. Right. And I, we were using it in the video. We were like right. waving around a gun, but nobody saw the gun. That's not why they called 911. It was a quick shot, but it was right there. It was like out in the open That's... and they didn't see it. <laughs> so like they did a great job. None of five of them. But none none, of the, they had there one were five job, cops in my house. Yeah, and they the didn't five. see a gun <laughs> on the couch. So wow. I was all hyped up, um, man. And, what, yeah. and then the story is that two houses down, there was a woman in need. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, five, exactly. Exactly. Five cops that went to the birdhouse. Yeah, and they like, came everything arrested good a here. couple of birds yeah. instead. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, a woman is being brutally murdered. Yeah. Next door. You needed at least one of the um, five. One of the five cops could have gone there. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, dude, my career's going okay. Uh, <laughs> dressed as a bird on a Wednesday afternoon and having the police called on me. I think that's a great. I I can't wait to see that. I think that's. Great. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. cut in the the footage of the cops at the very end of the video like bloopers that's right? yeah, yeah 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 um man it was wild but how are you how, oh, how are man. your projects going it's been great uh yeah i mean it sounds weird to say that in uh you know post pandemic because people are still going yeah, yeah. through but get like, a little closer to, to yeah 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 people oh, are oh there i can yeah, that sounds good, way better right? yeah. yeah okay um, or move it closer to me too. I yeah, saw you doing that. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is my first, so I was like, "Yeah, you okay, can do that. <laughs> I'm learning." I'm Get learning. comfy with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it's been it's been. Um, so I started a production company at in January. Cool. And um, we moved into offices, and we have offices. That's amazing. And it's crazy how that can legitimize you because I've been out here nine, ten years. I don't know. What, yeah. What's your count? Uh, dude, same. I moved out here right after graduating. Right. I mean, I'm 17, but. Uh, I graduated in 2012 at Santa Barbara. Right, right, right. I'm 17 years old, and then I moved <laughs> yes. immediately. So I'm coming up on. 10 yeah, we years met. Since. I met you. You were very young in college. Yeah, you yeah. Were like I was very young. years old or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think. Yeah, I moved out 2011 summer. So 10 years, 10 yeah. ish years. But yeah. So long story short, having an office legitimizes you in a way that I, I did not know. Uh, cool. Like my, a brick and mortar office. Yeah, like yeah. A, it's got like that. It lo- I was saying this looks Gatsby. That looks Gatsby too. You cool. know, because you gotta model your life after the after great Gatsby. Grat- great right. Gatsby. Yeah, you gotta be a great Gatsby. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, it's crazy because just since then, I got my biggest job ever directing because um, I direct. That's yeah. Uh, that's what I do. So I want to get there, but first yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. I want to go back because it it really has been a while, and yeah, yeah. I've watched all your stuff over the years from the Doritos stuff to the shorts, uh, the one with um, so, uh, date what, in twenty twenty five. Yes, that yeah, that was one of my favorites. It's called yeah, a yeah. date in twenty twenty five. That was a, that was a rad short film. So you came out here twenty. We went to college together at UCSB. We worked on some stuff together, crossed paths a bunch. We were hanging, yeah. and then you moved out here. What did you get into? in 2011 when you first got to LA? What were those first couple of years like? Yeah, I was an assistant editor on a feature. Oh, never, cool. Never ended up coming out, um, but this is- Damn, what happened? It, it, yeah, I, good question. Fuck, <laughs> uh, yeah. shot a whole feature and didn't Yeah, yeah, it? it had uh, Tony Sirico, it's on IMDb, Christopher Lloyd and me. I had a speaking role in it. I go sad really? eligible really quickly after uh, coming in here. And um, I, uh, I got a job assistant editing it and I basically just uh, spent maybe eight months. I was like, oh, this is LA's easy. Everyone's saying it's difficult. Like I got a job right away. That job ended. I didn't get another job for like six months. Damn. I was on Craigslist every day submitting, you know, being like, I'll do anything. Yeah. I did extra work. Did you ever try to PA? Uh, I PA'd a little bit. Yeah, I did anything. Any, I did anything. Yeah, okay. I really anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, anything. 
anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sucked dick. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. That implied. For an IMDb yeah, yeah, credit. Yeah. Yeah, for the for the minimum wage. Yeah. Um, yeah, at the running the running rate for two hundred for twelve for sucking dick, dude. Yeah, inflation's up now because of COVID. But right. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but yeah, I, yeah, and I, I basically I did that. I, I raised money on Kickstarter for a music video. I spent all my money that I made on a web series. Uh, released those. No one saw them. Cool. So that was disheartening. Of course. And, and yeah, great. we all need that though. Yeah, yeah. It just yeah. punches you. You're just like you I need was like, a, you need some gut punches. You did. Yeah, L. A. Definitely is the great humbler. And yeah. uh, and then I, I met a friend doing extra work and. Dude, I remember that we met up uh, at coffee with him like around this time. Jesse Pepe. Oh yeah, did, of I'm course. Not, I'm not gay. Music video yeah. that we made. Hilarious together. comedy video. Um, I met up with you because you had done a bunch of music videos. I'd, I'd even I helped out. I think I ad'd one of yours. Walk of Shame or something. Yep. yep. Went up to Santa Barbara. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was guys great. go watch Walk of Type in Walk of Shame Brent Pella on yeah. YouTube. It's the second thing I ever made. Third thing I ever made. But it's, the first like real thing. And I was in the bike path love too. That was yes, my you cameo. were the nerd. I was a nerd. That was awesome. I was a nerd in that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so we, we, I was like, man, listen, I've spent all my money. I've raised all the money I can raise. And I, I'm like broke. I, I'm like doing mm-hmm. extra work. One of my favorite extra moments was uh, there's a guy in front of me or and, and, and we're doing one of those uh, judge shows, you know, one of those like judge Judy, but not judge Judy. So it's like literally exact. Yeah. 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 So, and you know, you're getting paid 32 for four. So this is what you're getting paid. You're getting paid $32. You drive out from, from like, so you're driving out. Your gas is like $20, right? So you're making like $14. They gave you $32? And, and, and I see the person in front of me and, and you know, they park in LA parkings, its own thing. And there's uh, their car's getting a ticket. $70, $72. $72. Oh no. They are netting. They lost $40. They did extra work. Was it back? They had to sit there knowing on a, that ju- on the, a fake judge <laughs> on show. A fake judge show. Oh man! Yeah. So that well, was. How many years in were you? This what? was like this was year two, three, year two, two three, okay. three, and then I started editing weddings. That was another great period because uh, I had a friend or all my roommates. I was living with like we had we literally had college two point. We had beds touching. Yeah. And uh, all of all of my roommates had significant others at this time, and I was uh, editing weddings during my daytime. I was single. And I would just be seeing the happiest couples editing every day, their their best life. I'd go home, all my all the girlfriends are over, and I would just be like, This is a good period of my life. Yeah, yeah it was a good yeah. period. But we did the we did that comedy music video that I'm not gay that uh, ended up getting pretty big. With Jesse, yeah. Yeah, with Jesse, with Jesse JP, I'm not gay. Yeah. Uh, you can look that up on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, we got flown out to different places in the state to for him to perform that hilarious it was big at, at like gay bars at gay bars yeah that's yeah funny. and he would always because the gag is like he's saying he's not gay but he's really gay he's and, closeted but right? it's a very pro lgbtq message yeah uh, yeah it was so funny it's like not about him it's or not about whether being gay or straight it's just about this dude that just takes it too far right right so right, like right, right, right right but he would always go on these tours and i would be his plus one he'd say i was his manager and we'd go out and we'd nice. just go to these bars and have these ridiculous nights and go to like this bar in detroit that was in the eight mile where perform he's performing and then everyone would be like so are you actually gay and then he would answer in really cryptic ways you know he'd be like yeah. well well i came with this guy and he'd point to me and i'd be like what the dude come on they're like they're like well he's definitely a bottom i'm like yeah, uh- this is great this is great <laughs> this is great so uh, that led to my shit. first commercials uh oh cool that uh guy saw it really liked my work was like hey i got commercials directed those was that virgin when you were doing the virgin? those were before these were like this it was virgin? called fitness buddy okay um this it was like a fitness app so um, at this point you're kind of because la is weird when you first come out here to do anything in entertainment because yeah. you're, you're like a pinball Oh yeah, you just bounce around a bunch. Like when I when I was first starting, I had the my main thing was at uh, Cheesecake Factory, right? And then I would bounce from PA gig to like one time I I, I drove an eight foot mirror in a, a cargo van to right. San Francisco, <laughs> and I had to come back the same night because I didn't want to pay for my hotel, right? So I drove six hours up, six hours back, and they clocked me at a twelve hour day. I, and then I yeah. had to wake up at ten a.m. for like the morning shift at Cheesecake. Um, yeah. And then from there it was like, you know, weird improv classes, just bouncing around doing a million things. Yeah. So that's similar for you. Uh, but from a directing standpoint, cause directing, directing was always the path for you. Right? And, and editing was my breadwinner. Uh, right. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. They didn't trust me as the mirror guy. Yeah. They didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. no, didn't have that they shouldn't have trusted yeah. me. <laughs> Dude, I was PAing one time on a gig and, uh, it was toward, it was, it was in the twilight of my PA career. Yeah. Um, and I lost an envelope with $500 in it. It, it was petty cash. And I think what happened was I threw it away. 
with because uh, I had like a bunch of papers and shit in my PS car. PS, there a lot of stuff like away. Like old call sheets and trash yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just this manila envelope right there that had $500 in it. And I think I just threw it away. Yeah. But, and to their credit, the coordinators were like ridiculously nice about it. Right. And did not harass me or give me a hard time. That's nice. They also didn't hire me again, but it, it was toward the end of my career. So, yeah. As a PA. Um, Sent you into retirement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think they, <laughs> yeah. they probably think that I stole it. I didn't steal the five hundred dollars. Yeah. Although I should have, because yep. the way they reacted. would have been a bad play. It sounds like it yeah. would have been very it's three days yeah. worth of work. Yeah. You know. Yeah. A um, couple parking tickets. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it it is crazy that 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 I I really early on realized I did not want to be on set working on mm -hmm. other people's sets. Uh, and this is definitely an ego thing. But I yeah. was there was one shoot in particular, and it was called Novelas Atras, and I, I get my horrible Spanish accent, but. That being said, the guy that made this was not didn't speak any Spanish. If you wondered why he named it No Vuelvas Atras, you would not be able to know why. Yeah. He and, and it's one of those movies and he made it to get the girl. You know that he made it yeah. to he made it to basically get this girl that he was attracted to. Oh, so I'm gross. I'm helping him shoot this. I feel like I'm part of this weird You're just a pawn and I'm this a weird yeah, scheme. I even I was DITing and DITing, like for those that don't know, it's like you go in a room and you just you know, dumping cards and doing yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. like that's what Organizing I was doing. Footage and all exactly. That. I I just man, I was watching these shoots and I was I was getting depressed. I was yeah, like, I yeah, can't. Yeah. There was there was some really bad shoots that I was helping out with, and I was like, you know what, editing, I don't have to do with this. I can do it on my own time. I got my own setup, and so yeah, that was that was my breadwinner. And then yeah, the weddings went into corporate videos, and then you know I was directing like, and so the next big like landmark, I guess, landmark milestone in my career was mm -hmm. the Doritos, like you mentioned. Yeah. So I did one of those uh, Doritos Super Bowl, uh, got to the finals. Yeah, so Doritos, they and they don't do this anymore, but they did a competition, right? For Super Bowl. People could submit originally made Doritos commercials. Yeah. And the top three would air? Top, uh, top. well, they, they, it depends on the years. One, of, It was like the top one would air, the favorite one would win, and then my year they, they aired two. Cool. Uh, mine was not one of the ones that were aired but I was in the finalist. But you so were they, like the third, right? Yeah, like yeah. The I mean, next one up. They never whatever. released the numbers. I felt oh, like okay. Desmond, like, so you vote every day, right? And yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. I was like treating it as if you, you know, you win a million dollars. You win a million dollars, you air in the, in, the, in the Super Bowl. So I was like, okay, well, if my month is paid a million dollars, how hard would I work? I'd be like, that's very hard. Right, right, so right. So I would go to Apple stores and I would go to the devices and I would, I'm probably gonna get in trouble. No well, way. I can't get in trouble. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, and I would go to different devices and I would vote on the devices. Each no one's way. a different IP address. That was, <gasps> and I would go to another Apple store and I would, I would, I would, I would, I would vote. I would vote every day. I would oh type, my God. I felt like Desmond and Lost, you know, you yeah, type yeah, yeah. in a number and every single, I was yeah, like, like, I don't even know. Uh -huh. They don't ever release the vote count. They don't release the vote count. So you don't, I, I would like to think I was third. That's what I tell myself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but yeah, we didn't, we didn't air. I was at the Super Bowl and so they fly you out. Cool. You spend like a week with all the other finalists, you know, and, and you they wine and dine you. They take you like we were going to go hot air ballooning. You do all these crazy things and you get all the Super Bowl events. You meet football players. It's like they really make you uh, they, they really give you a good time. And and then you're in the stadium and anytime the fo they don't tell you when it's going to air. So anytime the game ends, your commercial could possibly air and you could win a million dollars. So God. anytime the game stops, you're just kind of like and they didn't tell you and you're in time? the stadium. You're not watching it on TV. So you're just waiting for like. Something you're waiting oh, for. Man. You're waiting for like uh, some text. Like a text you're like, or something? yeah, like any time you get a text, your heart stops. You're like, did it? <laughs> and and then you know, uh, the woman next to me starts screaming. She's the wife of the guy that won Scott uh -huh. uh, for the first one. He won the million, and uh, he had a great commercial middle seat, and uh, he ended up winning. But the 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 silver lining, like you talked the Virgin America commercial, the day before the Super Bowl, I get a call, and it was like a very Hollywood moment, and I'm in the hotel room. We're getting ready, you know, it's the night before, and I get this call, and it's it's a guy that works for Virgin America, and he says, hey, I saw your commercial, I loved it, uh, I, I was hard to find your phone number, but I found it. He's like, are you free next Friday to direct a commercial with Richard Branson in Vegas? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I am free for that. Uh, and uh, and he, uh, he was like, yeah, so regardless if you win or lose, we loved your commercial, we want you to come out. Amazing. Uh, and so, yeah, lost. But they sent an email right after we lost, and they're like, "Hey, you know, we still think you should have won, but uh, we're still moving ahead on this commercial." So we're flying back to LA after from Arizona. It was in Phoenix, so we're flying back to LA. Me and my my partner who made it with me, Travis, 
uh, Travis Brown, and we and he basically we were pitching these ideas. They gave us like a brief, so we come up with these ideas. We land, we pitch the ideas, and then yeah, three days later, flying out to Vegas. And to shoot with Richard Branson. Directing Richard Branson. Did not like being directed by me. Oh, really? Uh, I, tw- I think I was like 22 well, he, or 20. He, was just wanting, he just wanted to go to space. Yeah, he that's just wanted... He, yeah, that's, that's what his about. mind, even back then. Even, even back then, he's even like, well, then. who the fuck is this kid? I want to be in space right now. Yeah. Why am I not on an asteroid? It's actually... I was like, can you say the script? I, we, hear, we hear about your space, uh, <laughs> Mr. Branson. There's a script here. All Richard but, Branson <laughs> wants yeah. is to be in space. And I, I found this out, uh, uh, that he basically only like as soon as he lands because he has his island his island sure. for, uh, necker island uh and he lands in the u.s and i guess the irs starts the clock when he lands so like his island is where he gets away from paying taxes no from way. any country and if he stays in the u.s so he's in so this guy and he's on the fit, island all the time all the time and he when he comes to the u.s they just pile on all the events right so i was just one of it i had like him for 30 minutes right for me it was like right. the biggest thing in my life right him right. he's like giving a six hour speech afterwards he's like who's this kid right he right. thought he was right. just gonna be sitting and talking head i'm like let's make a commercial like yeah. let's let's get funny things going on let's get and so he you know he does not he's just like already on the next thing he's like what do i need to say yeah. you know yeah and as i'm talking he's just going like yeah 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 like so if you're trying to <laughs> like like if you hypothetically try to direct me right now i'd be him hey so yeah, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna get yeah, the camera yeah, coming yeah, this way I yeah, want okay. you to look straight yeah. ahead, and yeah. then when he yeah. gives you this beat, yeah. you want yeah. to look to your yeah. left. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! And, yeah, was, what a nightmare, yeah. dude! And I was like, and and, and so I, but I, guess I that's just a, how you talk when you have billions of dollars. Yeah, he's just like this. He just say one sentence. I don't need a. I don't need your life story. Just right, to, right, right. You right. know, he is. He's he's worth a lot more money than than significantly more money than I'm worth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just objectively, you don't know, but I'm I'm definitely worth less than Richard Branson. <laughs> uh, and I like you know like do I go Sir Richard? Uh, so yeah. Oh right, he's a knight. And and he didn't do anything that I said. Uh, and so I'm like, oh, that was great. Because <laughs> he couldn't hear me because he just said yeah. So I'm like, yeah. But can oh you, my god. Right, you know, great take. Uh, can you hit the? Can you can you hit the mark and just say the lines? I was more efficient when I said it next time because I knew I definitely. You I was caught like, on I gotta, a bit? Yeah, I gotta say it in once. Yeah. I got like three words for this guy. I was like, right. Walk, mark. Move head left. Line. Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> say line. Walk, uh, mark, line. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's great dailies too, where you could see like there's the, it ends with so the premise is like there's a guy that uh, you know orders a lobster, and or no orders a salad. Richard Branson walks up, orders a lobster. They're both the same price. Mm-hmm. So the idea being Virgin America, you can price match with any airline. So if you're why would you take the salad when you can get the lobster? Right, That's like right, the commercial right. idea. Sure. Yeah. So so uh, yeah, basically the very end, you know, he's popping champagne, and the guy that that had to get the salad is like eating a salad while he's popping champagne in the back. Sure, sure. So that was like his favorite part of, you know, he was having a lot of fun because we surrounded him with girls and it was a great time. Sure. Um, and, you know, he's he's laughing, smiling, and you don't even hear my voice, but you know when I walk up because he's just laughing and smiling, he just looks up like this. Like, <laughs> it's just his whole demeanor he just goes, <laughs> just super, de- like listening to me again. He's like, right. what is this kid? This right. kid, just tell me what you need. Right. I need to get out of here. And I'm with girls. Like, what is your problem? <laughs> I, I've flown in here from my island. Like, and, and I guess he'd like hurt. He, he, his shoulder was hurting from, from kite surfing or something. Of course it was. Yeah, it was hurting from kite surfing and his ankle was busted and from, building his you know, space program, climbing up a boulder yeah. horizontal with his new moon boots. <laughs> yeah. Breaking he's gravity. a space knight. He is Richard yeah, Branson's is. a space knight. You can't direct a space knight. No, you, I mean, who who was I? Yeah. Who was I to even think I could? So, ba- so were you right in college? You wrote a lot. Did you write the stuff that you directed? This I, and you know, this is an interesting thing. I've learned I had to write. That was like a big yeah. LA punching me in the face over and over again. I liked directing stuff that other people wrote. Oh, partly, interesting. Partly because I uh, edit. So for me, okay. it's like if I have a if I'm writing, directing, editing, I am so in it. And as, as I'm sure you know with comedy, like you get so subjective in it and you're like, this was yeah. funny at one point. Uh, I don't know if it's like, I, I, I don't know what's funny anymore. Yeah. I don't know what funny is, but I just going to take that Northern star of that first time I heard that and just keep trying to make that. Totally. And with editing, it's like any, you know, you can make or break stuff in the edit. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, for me, it was like, I liked having that other set of eyes that was in there from the beginning. I've since, so Dayton 2025, the short film, um, which was like really like the next milestone I would say, but that. That one was written by uh, Matthew Hart, who who's a good friend of mine, and we worked together on that. But I always liked that collaborative process, and because cool. I edited mainly out of necessity, because like then I could put more of the money on screen. Yeah. Um, then I, I found that working with a writer. So now, but now I've 
now I would say yes. Now I write my. Now stuff. you write your stuff. Now I forced to. Um, w was your trajectory always ideally into features, and is it still? Yeah, but, yeah. Because commercials to me are awesome. I want to make commercials because every commercial to me is a comedy sketch. Yes, it's just exactly. A sketch. Yeah, it's the same beats. It's the same pacing. You know yeah. what I mean. You write it the same way. You're trying to get people with a laugh early. Exactly. Typically, I mean, unless it's you know a Viagra commercial, but even those can be funny. They can sometimes. be funny. They can be um, funny. Should be funny. Did you write the Doritos one? Uh, Travis wrote it. Travis, okay, cool. Travis Brown, my my uh, my friend, who's now slaying it at Disney. He's doing doing great stuff. That's dope. So ideally, if if and when you move into the feature world, do you see yourself directing other people's scripts so, and choosing projects based on what you like, or do you have concepts that you want to flesh out and write yourself? Both. Okay. So that's it, and that's this. That's why it's a really exciting time right now because uh, so I got my biggest job ever. Uh, in January, it was for this biotech company called Zymergen, and uh, I, I, I think that just happened where everyone's back was against the wall, and I, because like you know, there's that paradox where it's like, how do you get those big budget projects when mm -hmm. you're talented enough to do them, but no one's giving you that opportunity to do them? How do you get the opportunity if you haven't done them in the past? Because they're like, just show us what you've done. Right, right. right. So it was just kind of this perfect lineup. My 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 business partner, who I started the production company with, uh, Zubin, he put he put me up for it. Like he was like, this is the guy. I'm telling you, this is the guy. So he told the production company, called the production company, convinced them. Then I called the agency, have to talk to them. Then I called the client, have mm -hmm. to talk to them. And it was just like, a, it was the week yeah. of the biggest calls of my life. Eventually like, all right, this guy might, might be able to do it, right? Yeah. Let's give him a shot. So, and then, and then I just went all in on it. And, yeah. and, uh, and it's, a, it's a corporate video. It's out, uh, well, their company, Zymergen.com, you can see them. Um, but but it, it, that led me, I got, w when we got money from that, we were like, okay, so, you know, we pay people out, but production companies in the industry, they take a percentage of certain fees just to kind of take a fee to keep the lights on, like yep. to pay the yep. office, which we have an office now. Um, so for us, it's like, let's, we're going to put that money back into stuff. I said, I got, ended up getting hired a couple more times with the client. It was a really good month. Um, and I said, let's take that money and let's get a writer working on a script for me. Awesome. Um, so we, we basically were like, let's pull the trigger. So that the second draft of that will be done next week. At the same time, Jesse, who I mentioned earlier, yeah. we, he's my writing partner. Oh, great. Two of us are working on our own project. And so it's kind of like whatever happens, whatever is going first is going to happen. See, it's funny that it doesn't matter where you are. If you're in entertainment in LA, you're always bouncing around. Yeah. Always. Yeah. There's that pin, you're a pinball at the beginning and you're a broke pinball. You're, yeah, you're, and then you get diamond. less broke. Yeah, yeah. Or you I just mean, get broken so many times you that broke, you're like, yeah, I, can't, exactly. I can't get broken exactly. anymore. The coal starts turning into diamond. Yeah. Um, but it's funny how you're always going to be bouncing around. Like, I'm bouncing between a million things right now, too. Dude, yeah. I want, I, I, yeah, I've been a big fan of your stuff oh, thanks, uh, since bro. the beginning, obviously, since we worked together. But yeah, like, yeah. it's been really, really cool. What, some of my favorite things are like just seeing, I mean, it was a couple years ago that I was like, oh, man, people are sharing your stuff that don't even know that I know you like that's what's really nice. cool that's my yeah, that's, that's awesome. my favorite thing to see and just from your stand up your animation and your stand up from the Spirit Airlines like that going absolutely viral yeah. that killing it people sharing that around that I was like oh this is so great to see and I remember you even did um, the, this is how small LA is because like I remember my roommate at the time did a song with you that Valentine's Day song with the giant cookie Danny Eldridge Daniel oh, Eldridge uh, uh, yeah helped, that was um, was that So Alone? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I was out in the desert. And, and, and again, <laughs> oh, not shit. connected through me by any yeah. means, but just like, I was, he so was like, funny. oh, I'm working with this guy. Uh, and, I, and I was like, no way. Yeah, and dude. And that's, that's like my favorite thing in the world yeah, is one, cool. seeing friends doing really well, which congratulates on all the success you've been doing. But like two, just like that small industry, people overlapping. Yeah. And like, I was just like, I love this guy. Like, but it's, it's, fu it's fun to root for people that you really like. Yeah. Because a lot of people will get ahead in probably any industry, but especially yeah. this one. With, with like like uh bad intentions kind of like they'll get ahead out of spite or stepping out of, on people they'll step on people they'll un undercut people they'll, yeah. they'll play people and manipulate but when people actually get ahead with talent and hard work yeah it's like amazing dude it fires me up more than anything else it's 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 really beautiful to see i yeah, think like it's and, fun and 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 then it's just like well that was always an inevitability right you mm -hmm. think that in your head you're like that's an inevitability because that person was talented and it was just a matter of time yeah but it doesn't feel like that it does not feel like that yeah. when you're in the no, trenches. It does not. Everyone else tells you like, "Oh, you're doing." The trenches <laughs> are muddy. <laughs> like my I, when I first met with this first DPI uh, that shot like the I'm not gay stuff, um, and he's he's like he's like talent never goes unnoticed in the city, and I was like, "Oh, that's that's a great thing, you know," and but and I think that's true, but it doesn't go unnoticed over like a a, a long expanse of time. Yeah, like you have to and you have to be 
tapping on people's shoulders constantly. Right. You, know, you have to just be like, I exist. I exist. Hey, did, do you remember that I exist? Yep. That's like the things like Doritos are really nice or like a short film that shares it. Like when I did Kickstarters, they're even like nice because you, you remind people you exist. Yeah. Um, like you, you know, I have a ton of people in LA that I've met, but you are, uh, when you reach out to me, I'm like, oh, of course, Brent, because you pop up constantly, right? So like you're just a presence. Yeah. You're a presence. I'm try- I try to be annoying to the point where people think I'm around always. <laughs> yes, I think <laughs> In like a good way. You know, but, there's a line in, um, have you seen Popstar with Andy Samberg? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's that line Sarah Silverman says, or she plays his manager. And she's like, I want Connor to be at the point where he's just everywhere, you know, like right. oxygen or clinical depression, just everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like the birds. I'm trying to be that. Like yeah, the yeah, birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah like just, the birds. Just Dude, I can't wait for this one to come out. I can't oh, wait God. for this. It's fun to do stuff like that. You know, my heart really lies in big production value type stuff. Yeah. Uh, that I can stylize and make look legitimate. Totally. But quick hit stuff like this that I can shoot in an hour or less on on a you know a handheld DSLR. That's I, it's so just fun. That that's, stuff is fun, and it also hits more than some of the highly produced comedy. You stuff. are always trying to recreate that on big. Like that's yeah. having having you know done everything from like just me and a camera to like big crews yeah um i have like a really exciting commercial coming up comedy commercial for a casino in in phoenix oh cool soon um and that's in like all i'm going to try and do in that is to to replicate exactly what you're talking about Mm -hmm. because you have all these people standing around you know you have you have a massive crew you have all these lights and everything and and it takes forever to do anything because every new shot you know you want to make it pretty so it's going to take the finesse the finesse even moving from like the camera here to here yeah it's like a 30, minute, 30 minutes, 30 yep. minutes to an hour. Yep. And, and, but you're trying to recreate that kind of visceral energy that, you know, just, just being a person with the camera has. Right. So like for every one of my things, every single project we've ever done, I do a, what, what I call like a test shooter. Like it's a kind of a pre in a way, but I take my phone, I, I go out with the actors. Uh, if I can get the real actors, like if they're my friends, great. If not, I get my roommates to just play the, the roles Yeah, yeah. and I film on my phone just the whole thing. Oh, that's cool. The whole movie. Yeah. And I edit it and I get to see the no movie. <laughs> yeah. And and especially for comedy, especially for uh, commercials, because when you have like 30 seconds, you only have a certain amount of time. When we did Baby's First Word was the Doritos commercial was Baby's First Word. You know, we had a baby. So it was like, right. I have like, I have four hours of this baby. I have to figure out. Babies can cry for four hours. Straight. Babies, yes. Well, and sleep. They, they, yeah. This baby was incredible. Liam was like, we could not have gotten lucky. Auditioning babies was an interesting. What is thing. that like? <laughs> it was, uh, it was weird. Uh, How do you there audition was, a baby? I, you know, it was weird because the question of that didn't come to my head until literally the first baby was right in front of me. Okay. And I was like, what do I? Wait a <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> Can you, you kind of just gotta look at it. I was like, it. does it? They can't say the lines, right? Like, right. Because the line is the baby has to say Doritos. Right, but babies uh, are dumb. Babies are yeah. They're just dumb. Are, they're, they're just dumb. They're, they're, they're idiots. I, but I love babies, but they're so stupid. They're really they're stupid. They're really stupid. And the stupidest people on the on the planet are babies. Like, oh, probably. scientifically, scientifically, just yeah, biologically, they're illiterate. They don't know math. They're, science. They're really pathetic. Yeah, pathetically unintelligent. Yeah, and I. <laughs> get this baby in front of me and there was man the stories of this audition were hilarious because like there's the mom one of them is like the mom with the baby in her arm right yeah and the baby's sleeping because babies sleep uh, a oh. lot yeah. and <laughs> yeah oh. <laughs> this is also like educational yeah. uh and and she i guess the baby fell she was coming up from long beach you know that's what you hear of these auditions is like the, the life story of these people yeah and, and and to be fair nothing against it's it's a terrible auditioning is awful it's I, the I, worst. I, I have full empathy for these people yeah at the same time i'm seeing 100 people yep. uh so she's coming in she's like with the baby and she's like you know he's usually and she's like nudging him she's like he's usually He's usually awake and he's, oh he's, my God. and I'm like, I, I was like, please stop. Like, to wake your baby. <laughs> like, maybe come back. Like, I don't need, I don't need you to wake your baby. Yeah, like your yeah. baby looks peaceful. I don't yeah. need that. Don't wake up. Like baby. I can't cast him obviously. Right, right. But I also don't want you to. And she's like, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's really like, he's, and I'm like, I was like, thank you so much for your time. Another baby, uh, came in without the parent. And it was just like this like, barely <laughs> what, walking. Just waddling. Yeah. Just waddling. In. What? And then the door, the parents close the door. And the baby just looks terrified. I, which wait, why, it just waddled in without yeah. the parents. Without the parents. Well, the, the parents, parents like, closed the door, pushed like nudge it in because that's these like. Oh my god, in. dude! And then the baby just like looks at us, and I look at the baby, 
And I'm just, I'm like, hi. And then the baby just like, you know, is like, because the door in the audition rooms, they're like, look to cover it so that they're like blue. So there's no yeah. handles, like visible handles. So this baby just is like, now I'm in a room <laughs> where there's no exit. There's these strange men staring at me with a camera. And it just started crying. Oh my God. And I was like, I don't know. Can bring them, like bring the parents. I was like, bring the parents. And then there was, and then like, it was crazy, and we're like, I, like I was like trying to get these ba- babies to say like, can you say Doritos? None of them could, cause like it's a complicated word. It is a complicated, it is a complicated word. word. Yeah. And 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 then the baby that got it, Liam, you know, and this is this is how you know, like the baby just strutted in, <laughs> came in super, <laughs> biggest smile on his face, comes in, he sits there, and he just goes, hi. Oh my and god. And we're like, hi, and he's like, he's and he's like, okay, and then he goes, Ritos. And I just go, I'm like, the, we give that's it. This, it. That's it. Yeah. This he, was baby. he the only one that could say part of the word at least? Yeah. He yeah. was. He was how, he was. how old was he at the time? He was. Like, uh, gosh, I'm so bad at baby ages. I at think least like three one. or four. Okay, three or four. Three right. or four. So playing like to- two. Toddler age. Playing three or four to play, <laughs> play two. two to play two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was. Oh man. It, 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 and yeah, you got to keep up with this baby. You got to keep up with his career. He's, I I follow. I'm friends on Facebook with his with his family. Is he uh, doing like child acting? I I you know I need to keep up with. His, I see the pictures of him. Okay. He's, he's aging well. He's edu- aging. Uh, that's weird. he's aging well. That's a, that's he's like seven. That's he weird. looks five though. <laughs> you know, he's, yeah, he's <laughs> he still, looks five. He's still you he's know he's look played ba- half his baby age. face forever. Still, yeah. yeah. No, he was he was amazing. He was so. And I remember my favorite was this girl that came in. She was like a grandma, or like an old curmudgeon in a in a. She just like she just came in like scowl on her face and she's just like my parents made me come here today and i was like i was like oh okay she's like she's like i i i, I can say your script and i was like okay can you do you want to and she's like doritos and i was like this is so <laughs> it, anyways that oh was that was an interesting experience and uh i love working with with kids because to me it's like playing films are just make-believe like you're talking yeah. about like they're yeah. just playing they're playing yeah when kids are there it's just making them have fun we did a doritos the next year that was called queen of the court and had um it had an, another another little girl that was super talented and we got to send her flying on um with a stunt like with wires and she was having the greatest time and i was like this is awesome if yeah that's cool. that's cool and like so yeah i think that was it's the whole audition process is super weird um i don't even know how i got on that topic it's the, it is weird the audition process is real weird so, yeah. uh, i mean i i 99% of the stuff I get sent to audition for, I just don't. Yeah. Um, makes sense. For self tape stuff. I mean, for, uh, I don't want to really act in commercials. Well, I do, but I don't want to audition for them mm. because they're not really looking for somebody that looks like me. You mm. know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, I'm like a half decent looking white guy. If, if they want, no, but- if they want a white guy, they want a character looking white guy. Right. They want a white guy that looks like Jonah Hill in 2010. Or right. they want a white guy that looks like, you know, um, what's that dude's name? That's like, uh, the tall, skinny guy from uh, exactly. Road Trip. No, did you ever see Road Trip? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one yeah, that yeah, yeah, hooks yeah, up yeah, with the big yeah. black woman. They want like a weird yeah, character yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can make a face like I can make faces like that. Yeah. But just my natural. But so whenever I see like something come in for a uh, for a. Um, a white, a white dude or a Caucasian like comedian. I just, I'm like, ah, fuck, I'd yeah. rather. It's gonna take 30 minutes to set up a camera. I'm gonna send in this tape that looks like a million other people. It's just not. It's, it's brutal. Not, it's brutal. It's, it's brutal because I, feel I know for actors. I feel bad for them. My girlfriend's an actress, and so I get to, you know, obviously anyone that's seen or dated or lived with an actor knows how much work goes into each self tape. You got to learn the script and all, and yeah. then you go, you know, set the camera. You got to get a reader. Is it a friend? Is it? Do you tape it yourself? And you got to listen to your voice and like time it just right. It's it's brutal. And then I am going through the casting process and like trying to be a good person. But by the end, you're a bad person. You yeah. Just you like you start off, you're like, oh, I want to listen. And then by the next, year, you're like, I, I hate their nose next. Right. Like right, you just right. you just turn into a terrible person because right. you're like, I don't you know, I got time. I've seen there's 500 submissions. I'm on number 20. Ugh. Like I got a I got yeah. a next. And there is right now I'm auditioning some local people uh, from from the place. And and you get some interesting stuff. Yeah, you get to one one edited a short film. I was like, maybe this is the commercial right here. Mm-hmm. It's full 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 edit, full covered the whole commercial. Two people in it. Like I was like, this my job is done. This is it. They I was they did a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't get the role, but um, you know, it's it's <laughs> you spend hours on these things That's that just lot, like dude. yeah yeah you yeah. work for a lot of hours without especially any the long guarantee. ones like the narrative ones give you like yeah. five to ten pages. 
and you spend, you know, you get a, they get you get your coaching, yeah, your one on one. God, that's you wild. Gotta set it, yeah, it's that's it's wild. it's. A, I feel like in this day and age, it's not the like it's. You could spend your time. It it's the lottery, right? Yeah, I, I think Zach yeah. Braff said it on I, on the off camera podcast. He was like, "It's a lottery. If you're good looking, or if you have a good look, you get a couple tickets. Mm-hmm. If you know people, you get a couple tickets. You've been in L.A., you get tickets every year. You get some new tickets. Mm-hmm. Uh, your relationships, but you could have a thousand tickets." You could have a ten thousand ticket. You could have a hundred thousand lottery tickets, and you yeah. can still not win the lottery. You're increasing your chances for sure, but that's it's it's not guaranteed. That's crazy. It's brutal. That's why, like, what you're doing, I think, which is so cool, it's like carving your own path essentially. Yeah, it's um, I just I don't have an agent or manager. I don't have any rep. That is nuts. Yeah, dude, that is nuts. I, know, I get that same reaction. Well, I know it, I but and, and trust me, because my girlfriend, uh, like, she she her, find, her finding reps, like, it's like. You would think there's some people you just go like you watch their stuff and you're like, of course, like yeah. any objectively, objectively talented, objectively can speak to audiences. Uh, and then and then, yeah. And then, you know, the thing is, though, over the years, I was so um, caught up in wanting some type of rep like, you know, a CAA or WME or something like that uh, to help facilitate new career paths. And I kind of gave up on that around 2019. Right. And then 2020, I was like, fuck it. This 2020 changed me, dude. 2020, I was like, dude, I don't need anybody. You know, and I really realized. Because you can't see anybody. Yeah, because I got told I'm not essential. You right. know what I mean? Right, I, right, like, right. I was told. And so were you. Like, if yeah. you're in what we do, you're basically told that you're not essential totally. to the world. Um, so that kind of flipped a switch in my brain. And I was like, no, all of you motherfuckers are not essential. Everybody else is not like, like the, the old school hierarchy of how Hollywood works is now how Hollywood used to work. Right. Because now, if I can get enough of an audience built around my platforms on my own, then I don't need an agent to pitch me. I need an agent to pitch themselves to me. Exactly. And then I can say, no, where were you four years ago when I had everything in mind that I'm currently doing now? Right. Fuck off, you know? Yeah. Not to say that I'll never have that. I would like that because at some point uh, you want to marry the two, I feel like. You want to marry the, still the individualism. Some, there yeah. are. I mean, I'm not gonna, I don't know any oil tycoons that throw around millions of dollars to make features. No. Uh, but they are out there, you know? Space Mavericks. Right, exactly. No Space Knights. I need a Space Knight <laughs> yeah. to fund my film. Um, but like my buddy Stevie Emerson is crowdfunding a hundred grand to make his first feature, yeah, which is awesome, yeah. And then he's connected to a couple of people, like uh, and I think he's friends with Mark Cuban now because he did a couple of Shark Tank parodies. It's a good, he's friends good with the Jordan Belfort from Wolf of Wall, the Wolf of Wall Street guy. Also, did a couple of parodies of him. Those guys love him. So like he's he's naturally creating these awesome um, relationships right. with people that could potentially be working with him down the road. And I see that and I see other people doing that too. Like I have other friends in comedy uh, or in music too that are just so solo and independent, putting out their own music, releasing independently and making 10X what somebody at Capitol Records would make. Yeah. Uh, And I see that and I'm like, well, what? That's it. That's the, that's, that's the new way. That's it. If I could put out like all the videos I put out, I feel like those are a mixtape. I'm just putting out mixtape after mixtape. And yeah, and then the album will be when Netflix says, "Hey, we love all your mixtapes. You ready for an album?" I'll be like, "Yeah, I'll put it. I'll put out some something on Netflix. I'll I'll, I'll work with a big corporate giant like that. Right. But I'm not gonna seek that out. And if they never come to me, I'm good. Yeah, because I have all my people. Yeah. I'm like, so that's what I've been focused on for the past couple of years is just trying to uh, connect with like minded people and, yeah. and, and and make stuff that I love and have faith." that all attract people who also love that stuff and have faith. I'm not the only one that likes what I make. You know what I mean? That was yeah. kind of the, the jump, jump off the high dive was like, okay, I just got to do what I like and just have faith that other people will like it too. Well, it's, it's so funny. Cause that aligns so much with, um, my path in many ways. Cause I feel like the metaphor for mine is like, I've had a machete just carving, yeah. carving through the jungle. Yep. Do I know if I'm going to, where do you go from the jungle? Not the jungle. You're trying to get from the jungle, not to the jungle, maybe mm-hmm. to a oasis. That's yep. deserts. One of those places. <laughs> yeah. You're going somewhere that's not the jungle. Somewhere not the jungle. Some of the yeah, an oasis is good. Yeah, oasis. Yeah, yeah, going from macheting through. You're going to Necker Island. Going to Necker Island. Take yeah, it away you're from gonna be, yeah. yeah, a lot of mosquitoes there, by the way. It's not. Oh, yeah. gross. I don't want to go there. Necker Island yeah. without mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. So I, I feel like in what my shift, I feel like COVID did that for a lot of people. For me, it was like, one, realizing that, like you said, I hadn't actually written anything that I was. So I was like, well, what am I? 
what am I going to say? What am I interested in? What? Are, and it's naturally kind of found this comedy sci-fi. I'm generally an optimistic person. So I like, like when people have watched my stuff, they've been like, oh, it's funny Black Mirror or like lighthearted Black Mirror is kind of like a pitch mm-hmm. of like a voice, I guess. Because you kind of have to, I'm sure you know, like for me as a director, they're like, who's, no one's excited to hire me. So like, what am I, what am I, what do I got? Right. You know, and I love optimistic comedy and that's kind of like, like Ted Lasso is one of my favorite. Oh, things how good of a character is he? Love it. Amazing. And, and I loved, I've always loved Flight of the Conchords. Taika Waititi is like my hero. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's the, that's the, that's the path. Like I'll, I'll be like trying to do that. Um, this beginning of this year, it's, it finally seems feasible from like a really interesting perspective. Cause like Zubin, who's my creative partner, um, is he fills in all the gaps that I never had, which is basically everything business. Like I was not a, yeah. not a good, not a good businessman. Sure. Sure. Uh, I would get jobs, I'd get budgets and I'd be like, let's bring on line producers or producers to, to, to work with that. Mm-hmm. Zubin is like, Hey, we can actually make a business from this with your skills and my skills together. We did this Facebook watch show, uh, for a guy named Tuan who, I don't know if you know Tuan, Mm-mm. but he's with shot studios. Like they do Lele Pons and Rudy Mancuso and all those people. Cool. Um, but we did a Facebook watch with them and, and we, we co-wrote and co-directed and worked with Tuan and we made the Facebook show. They gave us money. We just handed them back the, the finished uh, eight episode series. And we we're like, wow, this worked really nicely. Mm-hmm. Uh, this everything together from the beginning to the end was like, this is really great. Cause I'm sure you've been on, on shoots where like the budget feels strained and everybody knows yes. it's strained and it's just awful. Yes. This was, it, this was like an ensemble wedding in a mansion, uh, very big. And it was for no money. Wow. And we did it and it still felt like, Everybody was on the same page. Everybody's having fun. I was really proud of what we were able to achieve. It's called uh, Date of Honor. Um, but uh, on finding stuff on Facebook is awful. Yeah. So I, no one will ever, <laughs> ever be Facebook able to find it. Facebook sucks for yeah. content. So, uh, but yeah, we, we did this series and we're like, okay, we got we to gotta start something. So we're actually going to be doing uh, like a slate of movies. If you want to raise money for a slate, much like you're talking about. For me, I, I never had reps handing me anything. All my stuff has been word of mouth. I've mm-hmm. somehow made a living. I feel like, my, I feel like the guy from um, Free Solo like yeah, I'm yeah, missing yeah. A part of my brain yeah, yeah. where you just like I'm climbing <laughs> yeah, that piece of fear. <laughs> They're like, "How are you gonna pay for rent?" And I'm just like, "I don't, I don't know." I don't know. And yeah. if I think about it, I'm gonna fall right. and I'm gonna die. Right. So I'm just gonna keep. And it just, you know, but that's the cool thing where like you get a call where you're like, oh, they're going to fly you out to Cancun for a commercial or like, and it, those are great. And you get one of those and you're like, oh, I can live for another three months. But with the company, it's really interesting because it's like now we get money. Uh, there's so many middlemen in this city. Yeah. And, and there is a world where everybody wins. There's a world, there's yeah. these budgets in this yeah. magical land. And we've actually gotten these budgets. There's these budgets where, where you can pay people really well. You can you can have office meals. You can have everybody wow. having a great time. You sure. can go out. You can go out have like a, a fun event. We can go to dinner. Take people to dinner, and and then also take some production fee. Also pay everyone well. Also have a really good project. Money ends up on the screen, and you have enough money to invest in other things. Like there is a world yeah. where that is. Yeah. When I've worked in this industry, I've always been around middlemen. They take they take like like criminal amounts of money and they just pocket it for doing nothing. Yeah. And so for me, what's really cool with this production company is we're able to like essentially cut out the middleman and anytime we're super transparent about it. I like transparency. Mm-hmm. I like knowing where I'm like, even if someone, even if Brent, you're like, Hey Ryan, I got a job. It gave me hundred grand. I'm pocketing 80 mm-hmm. and I'm going to give you 20. <laughs> like I'd be like, I'd be like, listen, that's, you know, that's, a little obscene, yeah. But but hey, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your and honesty. Let's move forward <laughs> and and enjoy your eighty grand. Yeah, right. <laughs> maybe if we go a little over budget, you might help. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Uh, that's like because some some of these shows that we were working on, like literally, like the, the, like a, a brand, like a brand will come with two million dollars, and they'll say, hey, you know, they'll come to a company, and here's two million dollars. We want we want like you know this much back. So th- so immediately, just from the get go, they pocket half of it. Right. So so now they have a million dollars. So mm-hmm. that's just that's just the start. That's crazy. And then they go out of the million dollars and they go like, all right, million dollars we want to make. How many things you want to make? Ten of them. So make a hundred thousand each. But no, then but then there's the talent and talent uh, who's like the, they get half of it. So right. so let's make five two hundred grand. But out of the two hundred grand, the talent gets half. So that's hundred grand. So now the production gets a hundred grand to work with to make their project. And whereas in that is ridiculous. Oh to man, me. yeah. And that. I, I've kind of seen the the veil. I'm probably gonna get in trouble. Like people are gonna be nah, like, "Oh, dude, don't, don't veil, say these dude. things." Hollywood's say these. done. Dude. Like there's these numbers that We're trying people, to remake Hollywood. And 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 to me, I'm like, you know, there is a world where, and like for example, block shooting features. Like the idea of renting yeah. crew for for four months, you shoot three features back to back to back. Yeah, you can make that happen. You can you can 
and employ people for it and you can pay them good rates and you can get that done for for a, a, a very low amount of money because obviously the the goal when you're making your first movie is to make it for as little amount of money and make people as much money back yes right um and i found there's like so many dark little hollywood secrets that people do and like you know most people approach movies and they go like oh we're gonna make a slate of six mo six movies and they know they know they're not gonna make all six they so go they over budget it and well, they, pocket they, like two movies yeah, worth of money. So they'll, they'll they'll make their slate, they'll get their slate of like uh like six movies and they'll be like, Oh yeah, you know, and, and the, the money's gonna fund the first three. And then they go, Okay, then the first three get and then the profits are gonna fund the last three. But you and I know what yeah. about the profits. Yeah. Profits are it's like profits. the the twentieth most grossing movie, I think, in of any movie, like successful any movie, twentieth highest grossing was like not more more than a million. Wow. That's the reality of that's budgets. That's wild. So like, yeah. that's that's like number twenty. If you're twentieth highest grossing indie film, I feel like that's a pretty good out of the thousands of movies made. You would assume, and that's how much money you're making. And in this, bucks. and obviously with streamers and everything, everything's kind of changed. It's a there's no one talks about numbers. No one talks about like how much people are making. But ultimately, make it for as little amount as possible. Try to and then you know try to sell it, make money. Get money. Or for us, what it's going to be is we get these commercial projects. Those projects put money into the company. That company funds it itself. That's yeah. what we want to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's what we want. So it's similar to what you're talking about. It's like I'm t I, everyone when when because like people are like to asking me. People love to ask like, what genre are you? Like, what are you? You comedy? You like you like make this? You make sci-fi? You want to like? And I'm just like I want to tell stories that I care about. Yeah. The way that I want to tell them. Yeah. And I want to. That's what I want to do. And, and maybe sometimes they're funny, maybe sometimes they're not, but I want to make, and I generally end up making stuff that's funny, but like, or that I, I'm drawn to stuff that I, I, I think makes me laugh. But like, ultimately that's, that's, that's the veil that I'm pulling back. It's like, people are like coming to me being like, I just lost my train of thought in the middle of that sentence. No. Yeah. Yeah. What was I saying? People are coming to you. Uh, you're talking about what? what oh, the brand. So make. yeah. So yeah. So then I just like, I, but they won't do that until you make your own project and they go, Oh, I want that. Yeah. Like you're talking about. Yeah. So like. People will come to you and be like, I see Brent Pella. I see what he's doing. I want that. I want that. I want a show of that. But mm -hmm. if you didn't, if you're just pitching your show without that, without showing them what they'd be getting, right? it's kind of almost impossible, I feel like, in this right. day and age. Yeah. So it's, it's for me, it's like, like the Daniels, I think, are a really great example. Oh, I love the Daniels. They're incredible. They're like, so good. Imagine them pitching the standard way. Like, Dude, imagine them pissing, pitching Swiss, Swiss Army. Right. Like, like what? A farting corpse. Like, right. How right. are you going to... We're riding a farting corpse like a jet ski. Here's $10 million. <laughs> right? like, yeah. They'd be like, great. That sounds like... A, <laughs> but but they were able to build their brand and yes. then no one else can do what they do. Yeah. And so you know if you're getting the money that you're getting their their movie back. Like you're right. getting a Daniels movie back. And yeah. I think that's to me the model that, that I try to kind of follow is like I want to make a movie that people go, okay, I'm going to see Ryan Turner stuff. I like his stuff. I want to see another movie by him. Yeah. And then let's give him some money. I like a script. Here yeah. That's awesome. So, who, yeah. who else do you look up to besides, aside from the Daniels, who else are some of the directors that come to mind when you think of people that have crafted their own, uh, voice through filmmaking specifically? I mean, Edgar Wright. <laughs> that's who I was going to say. <laughs> I love favorite him. director of all time. He's so yeah, talented. he's my favorite director of all time. Have you, uh, have you seen the trailer? Uh, you don't need to have seen these, but I've done a couple of sketches that are very heavily inspired by, by the stylistically. Wright. Yeah. One was, um, when, when he takes role play too seriously. No, I, I need to see that. I shot with this girl, Madison Morgan. She's okay. a, she's an only fans model. Um, and she's a porn star. She goes by that. She's okay with that. Love you, Madison. And she, um, she came out, she was in LA and we shot the sketch where uh, she's trying to hook up with me, but I'm like taking the role play way too seriously. And I stylized it as close to baby driver as I could. Oh dude. And it, I mean, it's a sketch with zero know, budget, but, but still, but you could tell when you watch it. And so I, and I also kind of adopted his, um, his, uh, what would you call it? Like a smash zoom, that smash zoom. In, yeah. 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 His transition montage his, style. Yeah. With yeah. The, <laughs> Yeah, ping, you know, yeah. all that stuff. So I've I've, I've adopted that and, and tried to make it my own in a way. I love that. Uh, and you know, constantly moving camera is something I love. Um, so I don't like probably one out of every fifteen sketches uh, that come to me give me the ability to do something stylistically like that. Right. The rest of them are like you know they're internet sketches. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's handheld, it's zoomy. But there's a couple that I could show and say like, hey. I know what I'm doing here. Right. You know what I mean? Cause I direct yeah. all my own stuff too. And I'm trying to learn the language yeah. of the director more as far as, you know, lenses and F stops and all that stuff. That but, comes with just, but that yeah. comes with time. You know what I mean? Who, who else? 
uh, Bong Joon Ho, which is cool that he's still popular now, like with Parasite. With Parasite, out. yeah. Because I Mother is one of my favorite movies. It's I his, haven't seen Mother yet. It's 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 so good. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, and I I saw the host. Actually, my first. Oh, I saw the host. The, the first Bong Joon Ho thing I saw was in actually Tokyo. There's three shorts, and Bong Joon Ho made one of the shorts. It was about a agoraphobic guy, and stylistically, he does a, so many interesting things. Mm -hmm. He's always trying his blend of genre. Korean cinema is my favorite cinema. In oh, general cool! Really? Because I love that it blends genres. Like yeah. you, like in a Bong Joon Ho movie, you could be laughing one moment and then crying literally the next moment. Yeah. And 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 it hits a punch. Like it 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 really packs a punch. And I like his Korean films better than his English films. Although I think his English films have some great stuff in them too. Mm -hmm. um, I just love, I love Mother. I love Parasite. Memories of Murder is absolutely brilliant. Cool. Um, the host. So yeah, Bong Joon Ho, another big. I, I mentioned Taika Waititi. He's he's yeah. he's been my favorite. I've seen Taika's like. Great. I mean, Fly to the Concords is like my. They're my comedy heroes. Oh, cool. Absolute comedy. That's heroes. awesome. What we yeah. did in the shadows. One of my favorite. Wow. All -time that's comedies. the Lonely Island for me. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, obviously, I, can I mean, see Pop, the... Pop Star is one of the top five comedy films of all time. To me. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it was so underrated. Um, I probably because of marketing. I think. Do you take that into consideration as as you move toward yeah. features? Because marketing is is it's like marketing a new alcohol beverage. Yeah. Like people aren't care aren't, aren't caring so much about what the alcohol is as much as how the product speaks to them from the shelf or from the page or from the screen. Right. Um. And so I've been thinking about that more when it when I'm I'm working on two feature scripts right now nice. as, as is everybody else in LA. Uh. But. You know, I'm thinking about that, like marketing wise, pop star kind of failed marketing right. wise. If you remember, they, it, it was marketed as like a Justin Bieber parody, but it was very like, you didn't know when you saw a commercial that it was for a mock doc. Right. And you didn't know what, like, it felt like weirdly, I don't know how to describe it, juvenile, like childish kind of like it felt like just a straight up Bieber parody like a sketch kind of and very then, broad they showed the broadest broad. of jokes yeah, like, yeah. Was the, all the um the posters and the billboards were just the, the sealed gold joke and sparkly they, I think and, they, they, yeah. they sold with the wolves and you're right, like right right yeah. right like what the fuck uh but man that movie is just so funny and, yeah and, and yeah I I I definitely I feel like you know anytime I'm filming whether it's a short or something I'm always trying to think of like what's the poster gonna be what are yeah what's the what's the, what's the people's leg in and I mean I I never know anymore like I at the same time as I was doing the I'm not gay music video which I had no idea would be big I was doing this series uh, for this company Fishbowl Worldwide which did America's Funniest Some Videos I pitched them mm -hmm. and it was the biggest thing because they gave me money to make something and I was like I spent I spend money to make stuff. I can actually get money to make something. Right, right. And so we did this show. It was a man on the street called the Nikolai Show. And I loved another guy, another guy I love is is uh, 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 Sasha Baron Cohen. I That's every my allergy. favorite dude of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I I loved man on the street stuff. And so we did yeah. a bunch of these. It was the Nikolai Show. They were like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna get this to HBO once you make it. You know, they gave me like a thousand dollars to make like eight episodes yeah. of like you know five minutes each. And 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 it, I, I like I was just like, oh, I can buy people food and I can like get a camera. Right. So we went to Hollywood Boulevard with my buddy, my roommate, Sasha, he's a really talented actor. And like, the, we, yeah, we, we filmed that and that no one saw that. Yeah. You can't even like search it. Like it's like, it's they, I don't know what they did with it. <laughs> and, and I was like, but when I was making, I was like, this is going to be big. Yeah. This is going to be very big. Cause there's so many funny jokes. Like we make fun of the accent. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the jokes, uh, probably would not age well. Uh, cause, cause in, in Sasha's Russian and his family, uh, pronounces rap as rape. Oh my God. Um, and so he was asking people their favorite music genre. Hilarious. And do you um, like rape? Like R. Kelly rape. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was, it was uh, very, uh, oh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how that would, uh, play today, but I think it's yeah. very funny still. But, um, yeah, so there was a lot of that kind of stuff and, um, that didn't, didn't go anywhere. And then I'm not gay, which was put up like on 2 a.m. on a Tuesday, Mm -hmm. got on the front page of Reddit the next day and like right, blew exploded, up and it, yeah. it's like who knows who knows what gets bigger when all you can control is the quality of what you do yeah and I think you know within the you, you want to get a good distribution you don't want to get it tabled you don't want to get just put on some table like somewhere like uh, a friend of mine who had a New York Times bestseller told me like he was with one of the biggest publishers and they promised him the world they're like they're like yeah. oh yeah you got signed by us we're gonna put it in all the Barnes and Nobles whatever front front not front page front uh, bookshelf or yeah, whatever. Front bookshelf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Top bookshelf. Top bookshelf, baby. Top shelf. I love uh, it. Yeah, yeah. It's eye level. Uh, and and he told me he was like, I he ended up making a viral campaign himself. 
um, and 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 he was like, and then and then it became best uh, New York Times bestseller, and he 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 was like, it, and then they came back to him. They're like, see, yeah, and he's like, dude, you guys didn't do anything. You didn't do anything, <laughs> and and it, it's crazy because it's it's like that, you know, the Duplass, like you've seen that speech, the Calvary's never coming, like the, it's the a Duplass great, brothers. Yeah, yeah they yeah, gave yeah. a really great speech in like Sundance or Slam Dance, one of them, yeah. and it was basically like about the Calvary's never coming, and that to me is what it's about with like when you make something. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I mean, my first, we're, we're actually making a feature uh, this November. We're shooting one with our company. Cool. We're very excited about it. It's a very limited in scope, could be made for very little money and it's really original, really cool. And then, and, and this is like the shift in me because I think earlier on, I would have been like, I want to make, I'm in the, my company, my feature first. Like right, me right, first, right. please. So you're not directing this one? No, I'm not. Oh, wow. We're just doing it through the company and we're- You producing? We're producing, yeah, like yeah. creatively overseeing, like we're running it through our company. Um, it, it's going to be, you know, we're going to give it everything we have. Awesome. And, and um, we have, our, we're talking with locations now. Like the script is really incredible, like objectively cool. very, very good. What's the genre? Um, it's, it's, it's hard to define. It's kind cool. of like a mystery, buddy Beast comedy. Beast of the Wild. Roma- yeah, Beast of, <laughs> yeah. Beast of Southern Wild. <laughs> Meets with wedding With a Russian crashers. guy right. that says <laughs> Rick. <says> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meets wedding crashes, <laughs> but just the end of wedding crashes. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah. The, just the part where he finds himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, but it's really it's uh, to me it's a really important message. Like, uh, it, it, like it's not a message. It's not a preachy movie, but it's it's something I really resonated with as a male. It's kind of like look internal, look inward kind of movie uh, mm-hmm. where the guy you know it starts off being kind of like oh these people are crazy, and then he's like wait I might be, have something to do with that. Cool. Um, so we're but yeah we're doing that. And then my new draft will be coming out. Hopefully, I'll be starting to raise money for that. Um, and then, yeah, when we make it, the, to me, this is like our northern light. I obviously make it for as little amount as possible. Try to get anybody that can help sell it because that's the first thing they ask. I have yes. a buddy that just made a, a million dollar movie, and then the first everyone's just he's so depressed because he's just like everyone's like who's in it, and he's like he's like me and you know yeah uh, and people are in it, but like no one that you could if they're like yeah I don't know that guy. Oh, and wow. so the buyers of movies care about that. They a do. Lot. They, they do. care about, yeah, a lot about especially that. if people in China like the actor. Oh yeah, that's huge. Yeah, the really big is. Chinese. Yeah, yeah. China loves movies. They do. They love American movies. They do. Mm-hmm. Fast and Furious I mean, kills it. Incredible. Slays there. Yeah, that's yeah. why John Cena had to apologize. Did you hear what happened when that? Oh happened? yeah, him and LeBron Woo! both. Yeah, dude, that's some crazy shit, dude. Yeah, but yeah. There's no but really because I just don't agree <laughs> yeah, with it. Yeah, I don't. But, I don't. <laughs> But uh, I wouldn't I, do it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have apologized. I wouldn't either. But I also probably wouldn't have even broached the subject. Yeah, I maybe. would have stayed. You stayed away from that. There's a way to just stay away from it entirely. If you're asked about it, it's tough to stay away from it. Yeah. If you're asked, like, hey, what do you think? Uh, do Hong you think Kong. people in Taiwan will like this movie? Then I'd probably say, like, yeah. Do you think the people in the country of Taiwan would like this movie? <laughs> I'd probably. I'd, pr- I'd say yes. But I wouldn't be like, hey, Taiwan's a country. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe I would. Cause fuck. Who cares? Right, you know like, I mean? like I. Th- if you're, it's you're my a, movie, I don't this know. is like very existential. You have a yeah. finite amount of time on this earth. Yeah, money is obviously a factor, but like it's not the factor for me. Like money, Good. if I I would Good. not be in Good. film if I cared about money. Like if I would you be, in, I'd be oh, an accountant. God. I would yeah, be, yeah, yeah. I'd be doing numbers somewhere. Yeah, and in, in a in making money and then going in box seats. That's yeah. what I'd be doing. Yeah, yeah. But right now I'm not in box seats. I'm I'm in my. We're on our way. Baby. Yeah, we're, we're in our way. We're still being pinballed around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, pinball, pinball the diamond. Way. The diamond will be in the box seat soon. But no, exactly. I think I think honestly, yeah, it's it's uh, making making what you want. Uh, obviously, in terms of sales, I think you know if it's good, you can't control that. You can't control that. All you can control is if it's good and if it resonates with you. Hopefully, you take a festival circuit, resonates with audience, resonates with sale, sellers. Mm-hmm. Everybody's looking for more content these days. You make yeah. it for cheap enough that that when they do buy it, you make money back. People, the investors, get their money back. They're happy. Yeah, that's all that matters. And then you're gonna make a next movie. Yeah, and that's. And then you get to keep creating and get, getting better creating. as you go. You know, but we have at, to talk. Look at we, Scorsese, dude. Scor- oh yeah, he's mean, 90, 100 years old. He's making another movie right now. He's in production. That's the funniest thing for me because like you have actors like De Niro, very shy, very camera shy, like in terms of the press. Yes. Super talented, obviously, yeah. objectively one of the most talented actors around. Yeah. And like you don't pair him up with Scorsese. Like imagine telling like someone like De Niro that they have to create an Instagram channel making his own content. Like, you know, it, it, it's like the, that's what he, the, but this day right. and age, like, right. you know, like my, my, my roommate, Sasha, who I've mentioned a few times, he's doing it the, the standard, like the standard audition way. He right. did win the, a little bit of a lottery. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's been on like better call Saul. He's been in get shorty and stuff. And, mm-hmm. But he won. He won. The, he won. He won a lottery, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's it's great. Not everyone can win 
the lottery like right. with, with the you know i don't i i don't have like reps giving me work you know yeah. similar to you like and i i feel similar to you like when it comes time it'll be about like hey what are you gonna what are you gonna do that i'm not like i'm making a living and i you know I'm, I'm gonna create my own content if there was good enough scripts that you're giving it to me as like an unknown director they're probably not good yeah they're probably yeah not yeah, yeah you're not getting the pick of the litter you're not getting yeah. the, but the, the thing anytime you do get an opportunity you execute you specifically you do I've, and i've seen it which is cool yeah um I, we got to wrap this up because yep. i got to drive up to santa barbara but as we do what are your favorite movies of the recent years recent oh, years man give me like in the past do you watch a lot of movies i'm gonna pull this out pull it out because yeah. i've been I've, finding I've, uh, the I've, dude i've been watching three movies a week minimum for uh, that's like a, that's a, a year. Great. That's a great thing to do. I've been in watching so many movies. So I have a checklist of all okay. my movies right here. I have, a, I have my checklist and I oh, check. Oh, nice. Okay. Anytime, you know, it's really depressing when you can't. It's like 800 movies on here, but yeah. when, when you have to add it and then check it off so you don't. Um, let's see. What did I see? What did I see? Oh, no. It's at the bottom. That's the, that's the oldest. Let me, let me start by, throw, by throwing you a couple that okay. I've seen recently. Uh, first things first, I rewatched Inglorious Bastards last night. Yeah. Incredible. It's a great movie. Just Christoph Waltz is. Um, an ungodly talented uh, person. Uh, 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 Another round was amazing. Who's um, that one? That was uh, with Mads Mikkelsen. It won Best Foreign Film at the Oscars this year. Okay, cool. It's really great. Soul. Soul, incredible. Loved it. Um, did you see uh, uh, what was it? The Witch. I oh I know it. Are you into horror at all? Uh, uh, I know. Or yeah, like Edgar's Rod- yeah, style, yeah, 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 style yeah, yeah, horror. Yeah, yeah. I saw. I I actually really liked Green Knight. Saw that like two nights ago. Green, Green Knight. What? Green Knight. Green the Green Knight. Knight just came out. Green uh, the Green Knight. Uh, Palm Springs I really love. Love Palm Springs. That's the style of movie I actually want to make. It, I could see like that. It's like a sci-fi comedy. It was kind of. It was more fantasy maybe than sci-fi. Yeah. But I want to like I have a concept for a feature that's like a you gotta high, send me that. Yeah, I'll you send gotta it send me we'll that. We'll talk. Um, uh, t- 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 I, I, I you know what a movie I'm gonna see that I know I'm gonna love, and this is weird to say, yeah, but I think I'm gonna really love Pig. Have you heard about? Pig? I haven't. I, uh-uh. So Nicholas Cage new movie. Oh, I out. saw the trailer uh, on YouTube. Haven't other seen day. anything. Yeah, he's the former chef. Yeah, yeah, we gotta see. That. Haven't seen. Gotta yeah, see yeah, that. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually gonna be really. I good. think I'm gonna. I really think, like gonna that. Really I think I'm really gonna like that. Did you see Hereditary? I have not seen. Dude, Hereditary. that was this motherfucker. I, oh, uh, did you see? Uh, I saw Midsommar. Mid, yeah, Midsommar saw is the second movie by this guy. Yeah, his yeah, first yeah. movie is Hereditary. The dude is nuts. He's what's yeah. the, what's his name? Do you know off the top of your head? I'll look yeah, it up. Yeah, Ari Aster. Yes, Ari Aster, I believe. Ari Aster. Uh, he directed Hereditary. Was his first ever movie. Midsummer was his second movie. Yeah. Fucking unreal. Yeah. What what a back to back showing okay. as a, as a director. And these two, I'm really excited about because Please. these two movies are Paddington one and two are joys. <laughs> are just absolute really? joys. I will say I will die on the hill. Oh Paddington my God. one and two. You I haven't will, seen them. You'll have like if just you haven't so much seen fun. them. I'm just so excited for the the incredible just hug of a movie. This sure, is. sure, sure. It is, it is especially Paddington Two. Paddington One, great. Yeah. Paddington Two, incredible. Okay. Objectively incredible. Okay. I think you know, and then we're going back. Parasite, w- Parasite incredible yeah. movie. Yeah. I I already know I'm gonna love the new pirate show. Um, mm-hmm. that that uh, I loved Dark, the TV show. I Didn't loved that on that. Netflix. Didn't really that. good yeah. time travel German show. Okay. Yeah. Did you I watch Handmaid's Tale? I have not. We, we, yeah, we keep. I see. <laughs> Gotta watch t- I, 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 I have a like a. I'm getting your sense. I'm getting. Yeah, your Midsommar. Taste. Midsommar. Yeah, yeah. I watched it. Kind of ruined my day. Uh, yeah, it was. It was pretty. I watched brutal. it high. Yeah, oh, that's. I was gone. Yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Watching humans. Uh, yeah, get murdered like that. Oh man, let me give you two. Um, that are low budget indies okay. flicks okay. that I thought were really good. Uh, one was. Or I'll give you three. One okay, was Another have. Earth. Another Earth. Did you see that? I it's from know. the group of friends and filmmakers. They've made a couple movies together. Um, I think I've heard of it. Yeah. Another Earth. Oh, man. What are these people? I think they have a name for their group. Or maybe they don't. But the lead actress is in a bunch of stuff. And her name is Britt Marling. Okay. Yeah. So Britt Marling, she's been in a bunch of things made by the same group of friends. Um, watch Another Earth. Okay. Another uh, Earth. I Origins. That's actually a bigger budget thing. She's in that one too. Also don't know. All right. Another Earth. Have you seen um, The Endless? No. Write down The Endless. The Endless. Yeah. And okay. Coherence. Okay. 
Those are three movies I'm gonna watch. Yes. That's, oh, that'll be, that'll amazing. Be this, week. this week's done. Yes, dude. I think uh, Coherence and The Endless were both made for 100k or less. That's nuts. And Another Earth probably could have been as well. I think Another that Earth was insane. a couple hundred thousand. But those first two, Coherence and The Endless. Coherence is fucking insane. Okay. It's crazy. And it, not in like a big budget Michael Bay type way, but in an um, intellectual, like thought provoking type way. Like, uh, uh, what's that one? Uh, the Primer. Yes. Yes, exactly. Also made like for Primer. Budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and The Endless is just cool because it's, it's cool to see what they can do for no money. Yeah. But I'm excited to see what you can do for money from now on. Yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, we got some exciting stuff brewing. Where can so. people find you? So RyanTurnerProductions.com is my website. That's the only place that all my random stuff is all coordinated. Mm -hmm. Echo Bend Pictures is my production company. Um, so And we're revamping our website now. That, like, we got money. I never had money to revamp website. Now, now you we got get, website money. We got website money. You got website money. money. Dude, it feels good. It's expensive. It doesn't feel good to spend that money, but right. it feels good to, <laughs> to have the money to, have to the spend. have the money to spend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's Echo Bend Pictures and Ryan Turner Productions, Turner on Instagram. And, cool. And, um, yeah. And we'll be, we'll, we need it. We need it outside of this too, for sure. Yeah, let's grab, we'll grab coffee. We'll do an LA thing we'll grab and it coffee. won't take, we did the thing to, to do this podcast, the classic LA thing where we just bounced dates back and forth for like three weeks. It was good. But now that it happened, we're on a roll now. This is so oh, now. I feel it. Yeah. I feel the role. Now we'll, we'll only have one reschedule. Momentum next is time. Yeah. The momentum is there. And have a great trip to Santa Barbara. I, Thanks, dude. I miss, yeah. We, uh, we, you see a Santa Barbara is how we know each other. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. how, yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, love you. Good to see you. Love you too, brother. Bye everybody. See ya. That's it. Thank you guys so much for checking out the show and hanging and vibing and chilling. Shout out to Buy Optimizers. Get 10% off at magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash Brent Pella for uh, the, my, my favorite supplement that I take every day. And follow Ryan. Keep up with Ryan Turner, director.ryanturner on, on uh, Instagram and keep up with all of this stuff. I got a bunch of shows coming up that I should have plugged at the beginning because now it's the end of the episode and people have already turned it off by now. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm at San Francisco Cobbs this weekend. Cobbs Comedy Club in San Francisco opening for uh, JP, JP Sears. Um, and I'm going to Tacoma headlining Thursday, August 26th at the Tacoma Comedy Club up in Washington. All other dates at brentpella.com slash shows. And I love you guys so much. Hey, have a great week. See ya.